So causes of uh, delayed puberty in boys are multiple, but generally, the, if they're central, they're more likely to be a uh, cancer. In boys, we're going to suspect these if there's no testicular enlargement after 14 years of age. In girls, we're going to suspect delayed puberty if there's no thelarchy by the age of 13. So boys are allowed an extra year delay. They start later, they finish later. Keep in mind, though, that 2.5% of healthy boys and girls do have delayed puberty. We're using this cutoff so that we can check kids as early as we can without having to test too many children. So what are the types of delayed puberty? Well, we have constitutional delay. This is by far the most common. These are simply children who are having their puberty later, much like they might have a later growth spurt. This is common if there's a family history of delay, if the parents don't have a delay in their pubertal development, or also in children who have excessive exercise or work very hard at a sport. Sometimes this will happen. There may be a problem with the gonadotrophin. The gonadotrophins are FSH and LH. This would be hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. In other words, their gonads are less productive because of a hypogonadotrophic state. This is a problem with the brain, or they might have primary gonadal failure, which is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism. This is because they have lots of gonadotrophs and very little response. So let's drill down on causes of hypogonadism. When the, uh, when the gonadotrophins are the problem, there are some central issues that we might see. One classic example is Kalman syndrome. This is an isolated deficiency in the pituitary, and also these patients often have anosmia. So they're not smelling very well because of a problem with the first cranial nerve, and they will have isolated deficiency of production of their gonadotrophins. This can be functional as well. Patients with eating disorder, excessive exercise, some of our real star athletes will have a delay in their puberty, and that's a central process. Like we stated in boys, often it's a pituitary lesion. So we need to worry about pituitary lesions in these children. And certainly we would worry about it in a child who has a history of pituitary surgery. Remember, res resection of pituitary adenomas carries with it about a 15% chance of being uh, having problems with pituitary endocrine function afterwards. Flip side, if there's primary gonadal failure, we have to think about some other potential causes of what's going on. There are some genetic causes, such as Klinefelter's, which is XXY, or Turner syndrome, which is just one X. And in both of those genetic uh, situations, children have a decreased responsiveness of their gonads to the gonadotrophin that's trying to get them stimulated. Also, patients may have a history of irradiation of the testes or chemotherapy, or rarely, children can have autoimmune ovary disease, which will result in a hypogonadic gonad state where there's hypergonadotrophic levels of hormone, FSH and LH, which are trying to stimulate a diseased ovary. So if we have delayed puberty in a healthy child, we're going to check LH, FSH, estradiol in girls, and testosterone in boys. If the child has a concern, it's going to be largely guided by our exam. What is the problem? Consider thyroid hormone levels, prolactin levels, and CBC and SED rate as a way of measuring chronic uh, malingering condition. Delayed puberty. If there's constitutional delay, we're going to manage it simply by uh, reassurance. Eventually, your child's going to have their period. Don't you worry about a thing. For boys, we typically treat this with testosterone injections. Typically, these happen about once a month. It's not too troublesome. Families don't usually have a problem with it, but it is expensive. And so you probably will have to document testosterone deficiency prior to the insurance company being willing to pay for the therapy. For girls with delay, you can consider initiation of estrogen therapy. Usually, we simply put them on an estrogen pill, like an oral contraceptive pill, and that will start to promote the puberty and get them regular. So that's all I have today about delayed puberty and how we deal with that problem. Thanks for your attention.